morning. Happy Sunday morning to you and we are here in Hunter and a small group this morning but looking forward to worshiping with you if, if you're online or if you're watching this later or um, if you're still on your way to church we'll see you soon. And we're going to start with our first song and let's praise the Lord together. song, send the light. And there's a call comes ringing for the restless waves, send the light, send the light. There are souls to rescue, there are souls to save, send the light, send the light, send the light. The blessed gospel light, let it shine from shore to shore, send the light, the blessed gospel light, let it shine forevermore. Greet one another, <laughs> which doesn't take long here today, but there's others we know that are online, and we just uh, thank you to, that you can be with us as well. And uh, let's go with uh, verse 2. We have heard the Macedonian call. We have heard the Macedonian call today. Send the light, send the light. And a golden offering at the cross we lay. Send the light, send the light, send the light. The blessed gospel light, let it shine from shore to shore. Send the light, blessed gospel light, let it shine forevermore. So uh, we are here today, and uh, in one way or the other, and um, are uh, just looking ahead on um, 
the twenty first or twenty ninth rather of the month not this wednesday but the following wednesday we have our potluck supper here at six and then ladies bible study is will begin in in october and it's getting back to the basics it's a study on what we believe and why we believe it and i think it's very important even if you are well versed in these things to remind ourselves of of what they are and uh and if if we're not you know it's it's just important to be able to be prepared for uh to answer uh when people ask and also when those people knock on your door and they try to tell you things that are not in the bible and uh uh often we just you know dismiss but also uh it does sometimes give us a little bit of seeds of doubt i remember uh you know sometimes when that has happened with me where people knocked on the door and they're they're they're, they're trying to um, get you into their faith and uh and it's a, it's a challenge you know uh why do i believe what i believe why do i believe that jesus is god can i quote verses can i can i cite the scripture that says that jesus is god and uh, there are many and uh, which which the people who don't believe it, uh, tr I try to tell you that they're not, but uh, and they'll even dismiss it. I mean, the one verse in particular that out and out says it that says that um, in the beginning was the Word, Jesus, and the Word was God, was with God and was God, and that's right there. It says that Jesus is God, and it's clear, and. Uh, and so they'll come along, and, and uh, I've had uh, one of them say to me, says, because we're arguing, um, you know, the discussion was about that verse, and it's not good just to out and out argue, but, so, but it was, and I, I was saying, well, that verse says, doesn't say, as they say, it says, a God. They put a little word in there that's not in the Greek, and Jesus was a God, and Jesus, no, it says Jesus was God. And is God, and so the point is, is that um, the implication that He is God. Anyway, um, the man looked at me and said, well, "Well, let's just put that verse aside for a moment, since we can't agree on that." And I'm thinking, okay, first of all, I'm not going to put it aside because it's in the Word of God. Second is that there, even if we don't consider that verse, there are many verses where Jesus said. Uh, uh, where the Bible says that Jesus is God. So it's good to know these things and good to be able to, to go over them and, uh, and have an answer when people um, uh, challenge your faith. And, uh, and there's others who are even just going to ask your faith. And, and, you know, why do you believe that Jesus is, is real? You know, um, well, I believe the Bible. Well, what, does the, what does the Bible say? Well, okay. And uh, we can just uh, go from there. And uh, just, it's good to know. So anyway. Yeah, I just want to make it clear that next week we do have our regular ladies Bible reading. We have two Bible studies that will be yeah. going back and forth. So um, the, the deep dive one that you were just talking about begins in October, but next Monday, every other Monday, we do Bible reading. Okay. On Monday at 6. And uh, uh, so it's a time to take a prayer request, and already we have have several. Uh, pray for pray for Wendy Klein, and uh, and uh, we just thank you, Lord, for the many things you have given us and, and are doing for us. And uh, besides what we can even ask or think, we know that you are working, and we can come to you and lay things at the foot of the old rugged cross. We pray for Wendy uh, today, and, and uh, we pray you'll touch her and heal her, and that she will overcome this uh, sickness, illness quickly with no complications. We pray for her dad, that you will supply his needs as well, and that you would just give wisdom as they look ahead to, to how best to care for him 
and uh, we pray new wisdom concerning this upcoming move, and we pray that thy name be praised and glorified with all of that. We pray for Dan, Emil, and Tammy, that you'll supply their needs and strengthen them and bless them, and just pray for uh, even now as, as uh, you just touch Dan, um, that he overcomes this illness, and we pray that you continue to supply Tammy with her health issues as well, that you supply each one's needs. We pray for Stan today. We pray that uh, you will continue to work in him, that he'll uh, uh, continue to be the faithful servant you would have him to be. Uh, give him the, the, the grace the, of sleep when he needs it, and we pray that you'll give him the faith to trust you uh, when it doesn't go the way he he, he thinks that, that, knowing that you'll give him the strength he needs. So especially we pray for the strength for this day. We pray that you will touch his foot and, and heal that and uh, cause it to heal. And we pray that you give wisdom in all things. And we pray for Rose today. We pray that you'll continue to work in her. And, and we pray that you'll supply her every need and, and strengthen her and bless her. And uh, as she goes to the the uh, um, doctor tomorrow. Uh, we pray that you'll give wisdom with that, and we pray that all things will be done for thy honor and glory in all things. And uh, we pray for Sue as she's traveling uh, back from from Pennsylvania. We pray that you'll supply her needs and bless her and uh, watch over her. We pray for her sister Fran and her husband as they travel home as well. We pray that you'll supply every need that each one has. We pray for uh, Nancy's sister, Ellen's uh, mother-in-law, and we pray that, that you would just uh, watch over her and uh, during the, this, these days. And, and uh, most of all, uh, we pray that she'll know your presence, that she'll know you and trust you and serve you. We pray for, for uh, uh, Olga's son-in-law, David, and we pray that you'll uh, supply uh, the needs there, you know, the needs to be closer to home, uh, have work closer to home. We pray that you'll open or close doors there, according to thy will. But most of all, we pray that he and his wife, we each know you and trust you and serve you, Lord. We pray, Lord, for Sarah and Danny as they travel back. and pray that you'll watch over them. We pray for, for Matt Urasi that you'll work in him and, and uh, to overcome this, these health issues, but most of all, that he'll see his need for you, uh, who is the, the healer of all things and the giver of life, that he'll know you and trust you and serve you, Lord, and lead his family according to your ways. We pray, Lord, that you'll continue to watch over us and all we do today. We pray that you'll bless this offering and use it for your honor and glory. And I pray for the, the strength that I need uh, today, um, that thy name be praised and glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. Your songs open my eyes that I might see. Open my eyes that I may see goodness of the truth thou hast for me. Place in my hands the wonderful key that shall unclasp and set me free. Silently now I wait for thee, ready, my God, thy will to see. Open my eyes, illumin me, Spirit divine. Open my ears that I may hear voices of truth thou sendest clear. Disappear. 
Continuing in 1 John, in chapter 5, and, uh, I'm just checking here, I believe it's the last part, or maybe there's another, one more section, I just want to see. Of, of the uh, the book, and so uh, John is kind of winding things up, and uh, one more thing he wants to add and, and encourage us on, and so uh, we'll have uh, Nancy read First um, John five eighteen through twenty one. We know that everyone who has been born of God does not keep on sinning, but he who is born of God protects him and the evil one does not touch him. We know that we are from God and the whole world lies in the power of the evil one. And we know that the Son of God has come and has given us understanding so that we may know him who is true. And we are in him who is true, in his Son, Jesus Christ. He is the true God and eternal life. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his word. We just pray, Lord, as we look to your word, and, and we just pray that you use it uh, and uh, cause us to, to um, have our hearts open to what you have for us. Lord, I just pray that you will work through me and in me, that it be your word and not mine, uh, and your message that is heard. I pray that you'll just uh, uh, give me the strength I need physically uh, today as well. And that thy name be praised and honored and glorified in all things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And so we have uh, John who has written all along. He says, I'm writing so that you may know. And uh, he's talked, uh, told us what the gospel is and that Jesus is God and that salvation is in him and that we can have confidence in him and that we can have um, a uh, assurance in him you know very often um, a lot of Christians go through this life and we we have our doubts and fears at times you know and, and I, I remember one person coming up to me uh, and asking um, you know how, how do I how do I know that I've been chosen of God how do I know and uh, because uh, he had been listening to uh, a preacher who was saying that um, is that God is is the one who decides who is going to be saved and who isn't, and uh, it's all be predetermined. And, and if God hasn't called you uh, to be one of His, there's no way that you can be saved, even if you want to be. At least that's the way the man interpreted what the pastor was saying, and so he was asking me, "How do I know? How do I know?" And John is actually answering that question. He's saying, by this you shall know. You know, uh, there, there are ways to know, uh, but the, 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 the first answer to that question is basically is that uh, 
god has clearly said that whosoever shall call shall be saved and so is if it's been in your heart to call upon the name of the lord and you've done so then that means that you are saved now do we always feel saved you know did you wake up this morning and and and, and it's like uh, you know boy i wish i could sleep a little bit longer and you know i I don't really feel very holy today, you know, and so forth. You know, did that ever happen? You know, and, and we get that, and, and, and uh, um, Nancy said every morning. And, uh, and so sometimes, uh, you know, things are not going the way we want them to, and, and uh, we also get a lot of distressing news. And, and, um, and, and, it, and there's throughout the Bible, we see letters in the New Testament Actually, the letters in the New Testament are not throughout the Bible, but just in the New Testament. But that's beside the point. But, but, uh, but even in the Old Testament, we see where God's people were encouraged. And, and the point is, is that um, you have people who get discouraged first, and, uh, and, and God brings the encouragement. And uh, uh, why do we get discouraged? Well, we get discouraged when we get our eyes off of him. That's, that's the point. And so John is, is writing so that we may know. And so uh, he, he, this is his last final bit of the letter. And so uh, he's going to really try to uh, bring home some of these points that he's been trying to tell us all along. And he says here, we know that everyone who has been born of God does not keep on sinning. But he who was born of God, uh, he was born of God, protects him and the evil one does not touch him okay and uh, that's interesting I, I want to see how that is read in the new in the uh, King James and uh, pardon with me um, and we know that we are of God. Let's see. We know that whosoever is born of God. No, go back here. First, um, yeah. Start out with 18. And we know. And we know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not, but he that is begotten of God keepeth himself, and that wicked one touches him not. Okay. Jesus himself, the born of God, protects him. That's a little different in, in, in this, this verse here. Um, I prefer the part, the way the King James says, it is as keepeth himself. So the point is this. We know that, that we keep coming back to, and we know uh, that true believers overcome sin. Romans 6, 18. Being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. And, and in this, where there is insurance. When we see, as our days go by, and we see ourselves overcoming the things that, that we did before, and overcoming sins in our lives, uh, we, 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 we see uh, the evidence that we are of God. When our eyes are fixed on him rather than on ourselves. You know, that we, we keep coming back to, um, you know, the difference of relationship and religion. And uh, I know, know I keep saying that, and I'm preaching to the choir when I say that, because most of us really believe there's a difference between relationship and religion. But sometimes we fall into religion and, and, and by saying, well, all right, I, Christians... You know, I, I know, remember growing up, being in churches, which they would be said, Christians don't do this. You know, Christians don't listen to rock music. Nancy. <laughs> Christians don't dance. Nancy. <laughs> Christians don't. No. Wait, 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 explain that. <laughs> I, the way I'm saying this is that we grew up in different churches. You know, in my church, Christians don't do these things. In her church, it was more, it was permissible, okay? 
other people say christians don't wear makeup jerry falwell his wife maisel you know uh christians don't um don't uh in in, in, in well there are other things we would agree on christians don't swear christians don't um take the lord's name in vain christians don't lie christians don't cheat christians don't and and we have all these things that christians don't instead of uh, you know what we should have more is what christians do and and the point is is that you know sin and i and i know i've mentioned it many times and i keep saying it and I, and the reason i keep saying it is because i'm trying to explain it even more clearer to myself is that sin is doing it my way instead of god's way now i, I know that is very an over over uh, simplification but sin is follows from what happened in the garden and when when the, when the adam and eve our first parents said i will be as god okay that was implied because they took of the fruit and that was the the offer was you should be as god and so so sin is is basically coming out of my heart my desires and i will do as i desire instead of as god desires I, I don't know if that's uh, a really, it's still a simplification, but now we get the point that sin then is doing according to my will instead of God's will, and how does it come down? Well, many of the things we mentioned, you know, really come out as, as uh, can be as sin. Now, uh, dancing, that's not sin for everyone, but if you are doing that instead of listening to God, and doing his things his way, uh, then it is sin, you know. Um, and, uh, and and we can apply that to many, many things. Is this God's will for me? You know, and so we so we say, say um, another thing I've often said, does this glorify God? Um, and so anyway, uh, we know that uh, everyone born of God does not uh, keep on sinning. So we know that true believers overcome sin. Why? Because we are born of God. You know, the thing is, the point is this, is that um, uh, on the cross, Jesus died on the cross, and the Bible says that if you're a believer, you've been placed into the body of Christ. I know I've explained this many times, and I keep trying to do it again because maybe it's a little clearer. But when you've been placed into the body of Christ, that means that you have been crucified on the cross with Christ. Your old nature, the old you. Now, um, the, 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 the verse that really clarifies that, that really states that, is Galatians 2.20. Where it says, where Paul says, "I have been crucified with Christ, yet I live. Nevertheless, not I, but Christ lives in me." And so, and so that means that the old nature has been crucified on the Christ, and then uh, on the on the cross. And Paul continually in other places says we need to put to death that, or count as dead, really, that old nature, and we need to live according to the Spirit. And then also we have the phrases that, that are so important. You know, walk in the spirit, not in the flesh. Walk not in the flesh, but walk in the spirit. And so we are to, to um, um, we are born of God. We are not the same. If, if you can go on and just do what you ha had before, before you prayed a prayer, and sometimes a prayer is just that, just a formula. You know, I say the right words, and I got God signed on the dotted line, and so now I'm, I'm saved for eternity. Well, saved from what? You know, if you're going to keep going on and sinning, you haven't been sa saved from anything. There's been no, no change in your heart. And so that's why John 3, 6 says, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. And so we are born of God. We're under new man management. The new nature cannot sin, but the old nature will still sin, which is why Paul says in Galatians or Ephesians 4.24, put on the new man, which is after God, which after God is created in righteousness and holiness.
And so we are born of God. And the other thing is, is that we guard ourselves against sin. That's why when I read that verse before, uh, it, it's talking about he will, who was born of God protects him. Uh, it probably should read protects himself. Okay. In other words, um, he who is God, the new King James, who is born of God, keeps himself. Okay. And that's the difference here. Uh, the Bible is 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 uh, is telling us we need to be on guard against sin. Second Timothy 1.14, the good thing which is keep, committed unto thee, keep or guard by the Holy Spirit which dwells in us. That word keeping uh, means uh, guarding, guard against, guard against or, or, or protect it. Uh, no, not guard against, but protect it. And so we, we guard ourselves against sin. And uh, the Holy Spirit is what indwells us and enables us and does the guarding. And we are, are uh, sensitive to sin, on guard against it. You know, it comes a point where people can just sear themselves and, and, then, and they are so insensitive to, to pain. Um, actually, to be quite honest, I'm dealing with an issue right now where I'm having uh, a lot of constant pain, and the point is is that uh, I do best when I can do particular techniques such as breathing and other things, which I just basically ignore the pain and and get my body not to not to think about the pain and so forth, and and that's the way that I I just um, uh, overcome it, but it does not get at the root of the problem at all. It doesn't really overcome it at all. It doesn't get it root at the problem. Get to the root of the problem. And so we need to be sensitive to sin. We need to be on guard. Just as pain is something that's uh, sensitive uh, to us and alarms us that there is something that needs to be fixed, that, that is not right. And so we need to realize there's a battle raging we have uh, our flesh against the Holy Spirit, and we need to uh, uh, be on guard against the sin that is acts of the flesh. And so the, the other thing because of that is that we uh, overcome the temptations of the world, uh, evil one. And our first verse, uh, and the evil one does not touch him. And so we overcome the temptations of the wicked one. James 4, 7, Submit yourselves before God, uh, therefore to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. The point is, is we are not powerless. And as we see uh, victory, uh, uh, we, we are assured that we are indeed children of the uh, God Most High. And so... The point is we need not to go from defeat to defeat, but from victory to victory. Keep your eyes focused on the deliverance that God gives us. And then in verse 19, he says, We are know that we are from God, and the whole world lies in the power of the evil one. And so basically we see that the battle lines, and there are battle lines. And it's so, uh, the problem I see with a lot of uh, the mainstream Christianity today is, uh, and it's, it's, it's not just today, but it's been throughout my lifetime. We see it more and more. And even some of the churches and, and organizations that have been strong in the past are, are weakening on this point because the, the battle lines have gotten blurred. And the, the idea is, is to build large, uh, huge churches rather than churches that are strong for the gospel of Jesus Christ. And, it's the, and the point is, it, it's not a matter of, of, uh, of uh, how many people you can get in the door. And it's not that at all. The point is, is that how many people uh, can come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. And there's a battle line. The world wants us to, to accommodate it 
and you have churches who stop preaching against uh, sexual immorality and against uh, um, and against homosexuality and things like that because you know that's not politically correct. And so you know, the point is is that uh, that the pastors and many of these will say, well, we still believe that it, you know. Uh, in, in, in that and what the Bible says, but you know we don't want to be open about it in, on the Sunday morning because we're just going to drive people away. And the point is, you cannot drive God's people away from by giving them the truth. Ephesians six two: We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, and against the rulers of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places. And uh, it truly is us against the world. You don't want to think about that way, you know, it's like, but it is. The world wants to push you into its mold, and the, and the mo word world is not your friend, and, uh, and the world, because the world lies in the power of the devil. And so we need to realize and recognize that the world system stands in direct opposition to the life in Christ. Think about the things you see on TV and, uh, um, and, and, um, and, and also you know, read or hear in the media. And uh, everything promotes the reef, me first attitude. And ads proclaim. Uh, that uh, that you're worth it. I remember this one ad for hair treatments. Is that yeah, we're more expensive, but you're worth it, you know. And uh, um, uh, and uh, and then I uh, oh, I date myself when I keep saying um, uh, the, the, the repeating the old uh, beer commercial. Uh, get all the gusto you can, because you only come go around once in life, you know. Uh, Today, today, uh, that isn't really accepted anymore because now with this all this uh, uh, garbage that's out there about reincarnation and all that, <laughs> they no longer say you only go around once in life. You know, they would have to say you go around many times in life. You know, <laughs> so um, but um, uh, so but but the world is saying get all you can out of life. Get all you can. And, but Christ, uh, the Bible proclaims, worthy is the Lamb. Not that I am worthy, but worthy is the Lamb. And, uh, and, and full life comes in surrender, and surrender to Him. And so we see that uh, the battle lines are drawn. First you have those who are of God. 1 John 3, 9, whoever is born of God does not commit sin or continue in sin. That's really what it's saying. For his seed remains in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. His seed, whose seed? God's seed remains in us. And we cannot sin because we are born of God. We cannot continue uh, in a pattern of sin. And so... Uh, the point is, is that uh, we are born of God, and so we live for eternal values, not for the things of this world. And then we have the the world; uh, those who are of this world, those who lie in wickedness. Ephesians. Uh, I didn't get the the, uh, the verse there, but in Ephesians, where in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the power the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. And there's a contrast. Love Christ or love the world? And, and there's so many people who proclaim the name of Jesus Christ, but as Paul says, they pierce themselves through with many sorrows. Why? Because they're after the, the gain that is offered of this world. And we do. You know, Paul says to be content with what God has given us, and, 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 and we can be, and we can look to him and trust him. I don't have to worry about, you know, um, if my car gets all scratched up and things like that because uh, uh, it's an old car anyway, you know, but it's dependable. It keeps running. 
am just thankful for what God has given me there, even though it's not a Lexus or any of these other uh, expensive models. And so um, the world, the world lies to us, um, and the world it surrounds us, and it um, uh, wants to immerse us. The people of the world are are immersed in wickedness. It says that they lie in, in wickedness. It says they, in other words, they are surrounded by it. They are immersed in it, and they rest in it. And uh, um, even though when they they appear good, none righteous. We use those terms because the Bible uses those terms. They are in wickedness, and yet, you know, you you see people there are very very. Uh, uh, everyone else will say, "Well, he's such a good person, such a good person." Yeah, but if he doesn't know Jesus, his heart is desperately wicked. Who can know it? And that's not judgmental. Because, you know, our, our theme is this. Uh, I'm not perfect. <laughs> I'm just forgiven. And so we know. We know. We, ha we, we know Jesus. We know, know Christ. We know the, that the Son of God has come and given us understanding. And, and so that we may know him who is true and we are in him who is true in his son Jesus Christ we are in Jesus we have a relationship with him Philippians 3.10 so that I may know him know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death and so that's such a statement that we may know Christ. Religion is trying to bring Christ down on our terms. But you see, the Bible says I can know him. I can have a relationship with him. You know, we, 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 uh, we go and, and we have a conversation with somebody and they'll say, uh, do you know uh, uh, Jim uh, Blow or whatever his name is? And uh, and you uh, and you say, oh yeah, yeah, I know him. I, I've known him for years, and, and and you can say many things about him because you know this person. And and uh, uh, and the point is, is that do you know him? Do you know Jesus? We know him. We know many things about him, but not just do we know about him. Do we know him? And so there's a difference. I may know Jim Blow, I know some things about him, but do I know him? You see, there's a difference. And I can know Jesus, and I have that relationship with Jesus. And we know that he is true. John 14, 6, Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. And the truth is that he is God and we are not. That's what it comes down to. We are sinners in need of salvation, and only through Jesus is there salvation from our sins. And so um, Jesus is the only one that is true, and he, he cannot prove to be false. You know, Jesus said, Behold, before Abraham was, I am. And the people picked up stones and they were ready to stone him because they're, they're saying he's declaring himself to be God because that's what was the word for God, the great I am. And so Jesus was saying before Abraham was, I am. Well, you're saying that you're a God. And they were picking up stones to stone him. Yes, he was saying he was God. He is God. You see, and that's the point. He is true. He cannot make a false, false statement. He cannot prove himself false to us. He is true. And then he brings us everlasting life. And once again, how can we talk about everlasting life without talking about John 3.16? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That says it all. Death is swallowed up in victory. O grave, where is your sting? 
O death, where is thy victory? And we know that there's victory in Jesus Christ. He brings us everlasting life. And so John comes to the end of it, and I think it's very interesting. This is how he ends his, his letter. And he was to write a couple of other letters later on, but he probably, when he wrote this one, he was already an old man, and he probably had no idea that he was ever going to write another one. So he, 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 this is the final words he wants to give to the people, and he says, little children, keep yourself from idols. Now, I don't know how many of you have idols around your house, uh, I know. I know. One time, um, uh, my my uh, my mother uh, and other ladies in, in the community uh, were invited by uh, another lady in the community to go to her house and and to have a have a uh, a, a dinner. And so they they went and and uh, the lady gave them gifts and gave them each of this this uh, little little statues to take home with them. And later we found out that this particular a statue was really uh, one of the uh, uh, far eastern gods. And uh, I, I, I don't really remember exactly what happened there, but I think eventually my mom got convicted and got rid of it. And, and the point is, is that how many of us have, have idols like that around our house? Uh, probably not many of us but we have other things that are our idols whatever comes between us and God is our idol and uh, and so anything between us it can be riches it can be relationships uh, it, it can be uh, things that ensnare us and lead us to to serve this world rather than to serve God and I know people who have gotten convicted and they said, that TV, that is going to go off and never come back on. In fact, some have even, you know, tossed it out of their house because they, they felt that this has become my idol. I'm worshiping this. I'm looking to this more than I am to God. And so the, the, uh, the warning we have here is to keep ourselves from idols, whatever becomes between us and God. 1 Corinthians 10, 14, Wherefore, my dearly beloved, flee from idolatry. And so it all comes down to this. What is most important in your life? What are you living for? There was a ver verse, uh, there was, uh, I think it was Nate Saint uh, had, had written down in his, his um, um Diary just shortly before he was was uh, uh, martyred or killed by the Indians in uh, South America, and he said, "The fool tries to save that which he cannot keep, or tries to hang on to." It's not the best quoting of that, but uh, but uh, and there's another another uh, statement that. That I, I've long heard is that what's done on earth soon will pass only what's done for Christ will last and that ought to be our motto only what's done for Christ will last Heavenly Father we just pray and as we look to these things that you work in our hearts draw us each closer to you that we'll draw closer to you that we'll know you more and uh, um, just is to have that true relationship with you. And Lord, we pray that you'll work in us to keep from idols, keep from those things that come between us and you, and work in us to give it all over to you, to trust you. In Jesus' name, amen. We have uh, one more song. And it's uh, day by day. <laughs> Good 
day by day and with each passing moment strength I find to meet my trials here trusting in my father's wise bestowment I've no cause for worry or for fear he whose heart is kind beyond all measure gives unto each day what he deems best lovingly it's part of pain and pleasure mingling toil with peace and rest every day the lord himself is near me with a special mercy for each hour all my cares he fain would bear and cheer me he whose name is counselor and power the protection of his child and treasure is a charge that on himself he laid as thy days thy strength shall be in measure this the pledge to me he made. In every tribulation, so to trust thy promises, O Lord, that I lose not faith's sweet consolation offered me within thy holy word. Help me, Lord, when toil and trouble meeting, ere to take as from a father's hand. One by one, the days, the moments fleeting, till I reach the promised land. Lord, work in us to keep each day holy and, and, and separated unto you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and bring you peace. Be with God today. Go walk with God and be a blessing. Have a great day. Thanks for joining us. Thank mm -hmm. you.